Hey, it's me again. Um, it's or just class just finished uh, a, a couple minutes ago. Nobody's left in the class. And I said I wasn't going to record again, but one of your classmates was asking me about some uh, uh, creating stripes with gradients because I'd mentioned it to them. And uh, I wanted to show everybody how to do that. So this will be a separate little recording. I'll just tack on to the uh, Canvas uh, homepage. Okay, so we have a gradient going on right now. I'm looking at my, my main page. There's my uh, gradient right there. I'm going to actually comment that out, so that's gone. And then I'm going to do this. Background image. But instead of linear gradient, I'm going to write repeating linear gradient. Now, this is where it's going to get a little bit weird, okay? I'm going to type in pink space zero pixels comma, ink space, 25 pixels, comma, sky blue, space, 25 pixels, comma, sky blue, space, 50 pixels. Now, what this is going to do for us, it's going to give us pink and blue stripes. And there we go, pink and blue stripes. Neat. We can also do things like 45 degrees, comma, in front of all the colors, and now we have diagonal stripes. You can dig it. <clears throat> Actually, I kind of like that a lot. I might even stick in with this for my, for my assignment page. So I might leave that on there. So let's look at what we've got going on here. So basically what this means is the pink starts at zero and the pink goes to 25. Therefore, our pink stripe is 25 pixels thick. And then the blue starts at 25 and the blue continues on to 50. Let me do this. I'm gonna put this on its own line so that it all fit that way. There we go. So blue starts at 25 and the blue continues to 50, which means the blue is also 25 pixels thick. And because it's a repeating linear gradient, it repeats that pattern over and over and over again, which means now that we understand the number system, we can change this. What if I want my blue stripes to be bigger? What if I go from 25 to 75 for the blue? That means my pink stripes will be 25 pixels thick and my blue stripes are gonna be 50 pixels thick. So blue will be bigger than the pink ones. And there we go, blue is bigger than pink or obviously we could do vice versa. And of course you could do you know, insanely big things too or small. What if my pink stripes were just zero to five and then blue starts from five to 75. Now blue stripes are gonna be insanely thick and the pink stripes will be really, really skinny. And there we go. So we've got that going on. I don't know what I like better, um, but yeah, either way, that's the basic technique. You can actually do more than this, these two colors though. What if I did something like this? What if I did pink, blue, I'll do, I'll keep the pink kind of small. I'll go pink zero to 10 and then I'll do sky blue. 10 to 30. I'm going to do another color. I'll do, um, I guess we'll keep it pastels. Easter was just a few days ago. Let's do pound sign FFC space 30 pixels. So the, the yellow, that's yellow by the way, is going to start right where the blue ends, comma, and then I do hashtag FFC. Yellow is going to go all the way. Let's make yellow smaller. So if I start at 30 and I go to 45, that means my yellow is about 15 pixels thick. So now I'm going to have pink, blue, yellow repeating. And there we go. And that is what you could do. That doesn't look, I don't know, that doesn't look half bad to me for some reason. Now it definitely conflicts with my header up there. Um, but you know, if I did more of the pastels, that wouldn't be so bad. What else? Could we do with this? I'm not gonna do it here, but as you can imagine, instead of using color names, clearly we can use hex codes. I bet that means you could also use semi-transparent colors too, right? Instead of using pink or a hex code, you could probably put RGBA or HSLA in there and you could make a semi-transparent uh, color overlapping. So, that would be something to uh, tinker with perhaps. And obviously you could do some pretty complicated things. You could have stripes going one way, overlapping stripes go another way, and you could actually create a plaid. That, uh, that sounds like it would be a lot of work. 
but I bet if you Googled it, there's probably people that have done it before and we'll show you kind of what they did. So, uh, yeah, okay. So there's a little bit about um, creating stripes with a repeating linear gradient. I can't remember if I already have a video for doing that in our resources, but once you get the hang of it, it's really not too tough to do. So uh, thanks a lot. Talk to you later.